The review page on Steam is generally a bit of a waste of time. All you have to do to know if a game is worth buying is look over here. Check that it says overwhelmingly positive, and it's as easy as that. Make sure to check those genre tags too. If it's a genre you know you don't like, then avoid it. But otherwise, this is all you need. Most of the positive reviews just tell you that the game's amazing, with no real broader explanation as to why it's so good. And most negative reviews are just some scorned child who learned about the review system yesterday, and they want to be angry about something. Because Theo clearly is is poggers, how dare you say that to me, you piece of f But sometimes, it can be fun to see if there's anything worth your while to find in these reviews. The game of choice today is Portal 2, because it's a beloved game that I really like, and it has that all-important, overwhelmingly positive rating. So let's have a look, shall we? Not recommend, I've spent too much time on this game and lost my job and my wife. A total waste of my life. And then there's an ASCII art of, like, a gigachad. Off to a good start. Honestly, I don't know what I expected. Bad. Okay, well, at least it gets to the point quickly. GLaDOS insulted me too much. Well, actually, to be fair, she does do that. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. If it makes you feel any better, science has now validated your birth mother's decision to abandon you on a doorstep. I'm still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them. Standing around, smelling and being useless. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? I was actually talking about you. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. Portal to your mum's house and have, <laughs> have sex with your mum. <laughs> oh, you know, that one's actually pretty fun. Wheatley is British. Okay, well, this one feels personal, to be honest. Stephen Merchant's a national treasure as well. I have one hour on this game. This is a highly qualified review. I open the game and then proceed to close it. It took over three- Okay, you know, for, for in the beginning, I actually thought that this was going to be a real review, and it's of course not, because why would it be? For God's sake, does anyone have any real reviews? Just- just one second. Just- just give me a minute, alright? Paulie, get me the real reviews. Christ, it's so hard to get good help nowadays. If you have motion sickness, save your money and don't buy this game. I actually had to puke. Very much fun. I got motion sickness while playing this game. I only played for about 20 minutes and was out of commission for the next hour. Seems like a great game, but beware if you're sensitive to motion sickness in games. Tried changing the FOV and stuff, but it had the same result. Motion sickness in games is actually way more common than you probably think it is. So common that doctors actually have a name for it. It's called simulator sickness. Coined because the first examples of it were discovered in people who were using driving and flying simulators. Layers. It's most common in first person games because it mimics a perspective that a person might actually have. And a game like Portal 2 with all sorts of fast movement and flinging and turning upside down in portals going on, all of that can unsurprisingly make some people feel very motion sick. Nobody really knows why it happens, but there are some solutions to it. Sitting further back from your screen can help alleviate it. Sitting further away allows you to see more of the actual real space around you in your peripheral vision, so less of your field of view is taken up by the moving images on your screen. Changing your field of view options in the game is another common solution. Valve games are infamous for having terrible default settings, and the low FOV is one of those. Raising it up to 90 can help a lot with motion sickness. Again, people aren't sure why this works. But if you want my completely uninformed, totally pulled out of my ass crack guess, then here it is. In real life, certain ailments can give you tunnel vision. When you're sick, your vision can literally narrow so it shrinks your field of view. Perhaps having a low FOV in a game can trick some people's brains into feeling like they have tunnel vision. There are solutions to this problem out there, but some people have such a hard time with it that some games are inaccessible to them, which is a huge shame really. And this is the sort of thing that is actually valuable to make a negative review about, because it's an accessibility thing. People will actually have this problem, and despite it being rare, it's probably worth knowing about. But let's see if we can find any other worthwhile reviews in this enormous pile of garbage, shall we? Why are you looking at the negative reviews? Buy the heart in game, it's amazing. Oh my sweet Jesus. Paulie, why'd you show me this? I hate these sorts of reviews so much. They're just so... Oh, they're so stupid. It's such a disgusting waste of time, and there's so many of these. We get it. You like the game. But leaving a negative review literally brings the overall rating of the game you like down, and you're making it harder for people to actually find useful criticism in the negative reviews. Shut up. Please. Okay, but what about this one? Portal 2 falls short of the first portal by far. 
there's a lot more mechanics to wrangle. Long periods of walking, very visually dark with no brightness adjustments. The environments are generally a lot more visually cluttered, and many puzzles make you ask, what am I supposed to do, instead of how am I supposed to do it? Well, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's just start at the top. Portal 2 does have more unique mechanics than the first game did, but Portal 2 is a much longer game than Portal 1, and these game mechanics are drip-fed to you over a much longer period of time. The gel mechanics aren't introduced until more than halfway through the game, not to mention that all of the mechanics are very, very simple, and their interactions with other mechanics are also very simple. The bridges are just bridges that go through portals, that's it. You can stand on it, and you can use portals to extend its range and change its direction, and that's all there is to it. It's just about how cleverly the levels utilise it. And basically every single mechanic in Portal works that way. The gels are very simple mechanically, and their interaction with other things are also simple to understand. You would need a lot of mechanics that are this simple to be able to bog the game down. Point two is that there's lots of walking. This is only really true in certain sections of the game. Portal 2 is much more story driven than Portal 1, with more dialogue and more cutscenes. Which means that in certain spots in the game, there's relatively long sections of just walking while a character talks to you, or falling, because I'm a potato, or going for a tube, or there's walking while you take in the scenery around you, where the scenery is what conveys the story. This is a far cry from Portal 1 structure, but it's the price you pay for having a bigger story in your game. And if you personally dislike having more story in your game, then that's fair enough. But personally, I think the story is very well done, and in classic Valve fashion, it very rarely intrudes on the gameplay. It very rarely takes away control of your character. This ends up boiling down to a question of whether you like more story-driven games, or whether you don't. It's not really about the walking sections, it's just about how story-driven you like your games to be. The game's dark in some areas, I guess, but I don't remember it being that dark. The environments are more visually cluttered? Well, quite frankly, I don't even think this is necessarily true. The chambers of Aperture Science are very bland and empty in the first game, which of course is on purpose, but that lack of visual clutter is just the aesthetic that's on display in the game. In the later parts of the game, when you're trying to escape the test chambers, the outside world of Aperture Science is very cluttered, dirty, and dense, which is also true in the sequel. But this time, the game starts off cluttered, then the test chambers get fixed up and polished again, and then you arrive at a cluttered location once more. Increased graphical fidelity has nothing to do with it, if you ask me. And finally, the part that makes the least sense. Many puzzles make you ask, what am I supposed to do, instead of how am I supposed to do it? This is just silly. Getting into the semantics of how these two questions are ever so slightly different from one another, and how that might change gameplay, is honestly a waste of time. But, if anything, both Portal 1 and Portal 2 ask you how am I supposed to do it far more than they ask you what am I supposed to do, since the game's unique mechanics are introduced to you very clearly and concisely, which means there's very little confusion on the what side of things. The what is portals, or gel, or excursion funnels, or whatever else it shows you. These mechanics are obviously part of the solution to the puzzle, and you know it from the start. It's how you use these things that makes each puzzle unique and interesting. So despite how much of a pedantic waste of time dissecting this sentence is, it doesn't end up even being true at the end of the day. Poorly, is this, is this really the best you could find me? Can you get me a new one? GLaDOS called me adopt- okay, not this one. Funnily enough, these two reviews are actually right next to each other. But this guy's cringe for using a negative review to say something positive. So, fuck that guy. The game gets very boring over time. The jokes are repetitive, and the story has a bunch of twists that simply make the game longer. When you beat the main game, that's basically it. All the custom chambers suck and are easily breakable, so it gets boring quickly. Portal 2 being a puzzle game means that it suffers from the same issue that all puzzle games have. A lot of games get their replayability from mechanical challenge. Games like Cup Head. Getting better at the game is an incentive to go back and play it again. See how much you've improved, or how quickly you can beat the bosses this time. Roguelikes get their replay value from the random nature of the game, so no two runs will ever be the same. But puzzle games don't have this luxury. Once you've beaten the game, going back to replay it can be quite boring, if not literally impossible in some cases. The fun of the game is the discovery. Discovering interesting solutions to the puzzle is the fun. So if you know the solution to the puzzle, there is no fun. There's no 
discovery. There's no aha moment. You're just going through the motions to complete the level. But Portal 2 is actually a slight exception to this rule. Since Portal 2 has two major changes that make the game much more replayable than the average puzzle game. First off, Portal has speedruns. There's time trials for individual levels built into the game. And there's also external leaderboards for speedrun categories on the internet. So this takes a puzzle game and begins to put a ton of emphasis on that mechanical skill, giving it a similar type of replay value as a game like Cuphead might have. Instead of discovering the solution to a puzzle, it becomes how well you can execute the strategy in this room to go as fast as possible. And with source movement mechanics built in, that adds even more depth to just simply moving around the room. The other thing Portal has is user-created stages. There's a level editor that allows people to make custom puzzles. Of course, most of them are bad, as is the case with basically all user-generated content, but finding the good ones is a pretty good source of replay value. So Portal being a puzzle game reduces its replay value, but Valve were clever enough to make up for that downside in a couple of ways. You know what? These negative reviews have actually been a lot more interesting than I thought they would be. You know, usually these meme examples take over really hard. But this time, there's actually been some interesting things to say about them. That's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna keep going. Bring, bring me the next one. You play as a woman. Okay, why did you show me this one? This review is clearly a waste of time. What the f